Hey, what's up guys? So I'm coming to you this morning with another What's Next. This is gonna be on the WBA regular super welterweight champion at 154, the veteran Arislandi Lara. Um, I currently have Lara ranked fifth at 154 right now, excuse me. He entered um, on uh, Saturday, uh, August 29th, he returned after a one year layoff and took on little known uh, Greg Vendetti and got a workmanlike, you know, kind of uneventful 12 round unanimous decision. Um, Vendetti tried hard. Uh, Larry mixed it up with him a little bit, but really it was kind of just, um, you know, doing his pick, uh, you know, pick apart and move and box. Uh, technique which you know hey that's the kind of style that we've grown accustomed to with Lara but um you know I was hoping he was going to get Vendetti out of there it was uh, I wasn't expecting just a regular workman like um performance out of Lara so a little disappointed in that uh from him you know wanted to see more wanted to see a knockout of course um but you know he did what he had to do and he got the win so now Lara he's uh I believe he's 36 37 now um the big question is what's next for Arizlandi Lara well you know, um, as I've always said, this is the most wide open division in terms of fighters being able to face each other in pretty much all of boxing. Um, the welterweights would be a strong second, but pretty much nine of the 10 uh, fighters at one at, at 154 uh, of the top 10 guys are all um, with the PBC. So this is a division that it's very easy to make fights um, as long as the guys want to fight. And um, Lara's one of those PBC guys. So, you know, um, Lara can, uh, you know, it's up to him. He wants to fight the winner of Charlo and Rosario. Um, you know, I think that's a possibility for him. But but the problem I, I see with the winner of that fight is the winner of that fight's going to be facing two mandatories. Uh, you know, staring, staring in the face of one for sure, possibly two mandatories. Um, you're going to have the WBC mandatory do... And uh, that's going to be between the winner of Erickson Lubin, Lubin and Terrell Gachet, which I think is going to be Lubin. Um, and then uh, you're, you might have the IBF mandatory do also, excuse me, which is uh, uh, th there's an undefeated Russian fighter that is due to fight. Um, he might end up fighting Jared Hurd to determine the number one contender there. So the winner of Charlo Rosario it's going to be kind of in a, a predicament. Um, I don't think if it's Charlo, which I think it probably will be, I don't think he wants anything to do with a rematch with Lubin. He knocked Lubin out in the first round of their fight, so I don't, I don't think he'd have a problem giving up that belt. But again, he's going to have an IBF mandatory due. Now, it, the point I'm trying to make is if if Charlo were to go against Arizlani Lara, which is a more makeable fight and a bigger name fight, he might have to give up two belts of the three. I think he'd be willing to give up one. I don't think he wants to give up two belts of the three in order to face a guy like Lara. I just don't think that's a big enough fight for him. So my opinion is I would like to see Lara. I think there's a chance of it with them being with the PBC. I'm going to lean more towards the no for him to face the winner of that fight because the winner is going to have mandatories too. Um, there's Julian J-Rock Williams. Not sure J-Rock wants anything to do with Lara. Um, he might, he, I mean, not to say he, he wouldn't possibly go after him, but I think J-Rock really just wants to get in line for the big dogs, but he might end up having to face uh, him. And there's Jarrett Hurd. Uh, apparently, according to Lara, he offered Jarrett Hurd the fight, and Hurd said no. I don't know how true that is. I don't know if Hurd is uh, potentially, like I said, fighting in that mandatory, IBF mandatory, to get a direct shot against um, the winner of Charlo Rosario. Maybe that's what he's doing. Haven't heard anything on him yet, but... I mean, if, if Hurd's not doing anything else, why not fight Lara in a rematch? I mean, I think he'd beat him. I think he'd be favored to beat him by even more. The first fight, it was 50-50 going in, and I think a lot. Uh, I think more people were picking Lara to win the fight. Um, so this one, I think a lot more people would pick Hurd, and he would be the favorite. So be interesting, but I, I really hope Hurd is an option. Um, I don't see him facing Brian Castaño next. Uh, Castaño's in line to fight Patrick Teixeira for the WBO belt anyways. Tony Harrison would be an interesting one, but does Harrison, after getting knocked out last year, I believe his father passed away from COVID-19. I'm not sure Harrison wants to come back and fight a guy like Lara 
first fight out after the emotions of being knocked out, losing his title, losing his father. I mean, that's a lot. He's had a lot go on, and um, that would be a big deal. So we got to wait and see. And then, um, uh, you know, the winner of Lubin and Gache, I just don't think uh, would would be uh, it, it's going to be in line for the WBC title. So why go after Lara? Um, so right now, I don't know how many guys it's really possible would would be willing to face Lara next in the top ten. But I know Michel Soro is the WBA gold champion, the guy from France, and a former world title challenger. I know he is in line and is trying to get a fight with, with Lara. So, a mandatory fight. So, that might get ordered, and I think that might be the front runner, is they might order Lara to fight him to where if Lara wants to go fight one of the other guys, and it's possible he might have to give up the regular belt to do that. So, we'll see. But those are the options that are kind of in the vicinity in the area of Arizlani Lara and what he could be doing. Um, I hope he takes on a bigger name in his next fight, at least Michel Soro, um, you know, because this this was really a step back in my opinion, and especially uh, since he went in there and couldn't even knock this guy out. That's something that Michel Soro did in only two rounds. I know the styles are different, but still, I feel like he should have been able to get him out of there, you know, at least by the middle rounds. and or the later rounds, and he, he just didn't do it at all. So I think there was a lack of an aggressiveness towards it too. So you just got to wait and see. But Lara, the veteran, 36, 37 years old now, how much juice does he have left? And, um, you know, who's who's going to be waiting in line to look at him as possibly a veteran stepping stone So to get a secondary world title? Those are the questions. Hopefully we get some answers soon. But that's the what's next on Arizona de Lara, the WBA regular a super welterweight champ at 154. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed it. True boxing, you've been hit with the truth.